Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Free American Hour. I'm your host, Clay Douglas, and my guest today will be uh, Xavier Paul, and uh, he's a gentleman that does a block of uh, voiceovers up in New York City, and I thought uh, we'd get uh, a little bit of insight. I'll be bringing him up in just a little bit. And, uh, hey, it is a holidays. It is hey, holidays. It was a great Thanksgiving dinner for me. And, man, I got David, I got, I got Manny. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's see. Let me do this. Let me do a couple of other things. Uh, we'll bring Manny into the, uh, circle here, so uh, in case the Zionist want to come in here and uh, 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 harass me, and, and tell us how, well, we're just trying to survive, we got to take over the world because we're the chosen ones, kiss my ass, ain't gonna happen there, folks. Now, I've got some information up on my website. Good morning, Brock. Welcome. And you too, Chip. I've got uh, I've got some new things put up on my website that uh, well, you really ought to be aware of. And uh, it'll be uh, some of the guests here. You know, I'll be speaking, by the way. I will be speaking in Tucson of the Joel D. Valdez Main Library. There's a map up there. It's on Stone Avenue, right downtown. And uh, I've been telling you that uh, this is the enemy that men like myself have been opposing for 2,000 years. Yeah, that's right. Jesus ran the money changers out of the temple. The banks have to make men like me into criminals. Now keep in mind, the same people that murdered the presidents have tried to kill Clay Douglas and stop the Free American Magazine. That was told to you all, that was told, that told you all of this. Free American Magazine is telling you, told you everything that's going on right now. We told you this is coming. We told you what FEMA was going to be. I told you what, what, uh, oh, in case of a single outbreak of smallpox, we'll need 400,000 well-armed, well-trained, organized, disciplined troops. I've even told you what that would be, the UN Rapid Strike Force. And that is happening right now. That is happening right now. And what's going on with Occupy Wall Street? A lot of, because of the work that I've done and Bill Cooper's done and, uh, you know, everybody else out there that's tried to get the truth out of people, we've tried to tell you what's, ha what's happening. And uh, you don't understand, a lot of you don't understand, but, hey, Ayn Rand understood all the way back, uh, you know, in the uh, 1957. Do you think that we want these laws to be observed? We want them broken. There's no way to rule innocent men. The only power the government has is the power to crack down on criminals. And, well, when there's not enough criminals, one makes them. One makes so many things a crime that it becomes impossible for men to live without breaking laws. Atlas Rugg, 1957. And uh, Cleon Skousen wrote The Naked Communist back in 1963. Now, 57, 63. This is the beginning of the 60s, guys. The, it's the beginning of the 60s. Oops. Okay, what happened here? Problem with the call. Since it appears you're calling back into a live show, we're reconnecting you now. Okay, and Talk Shoe's still up and Crusade's still up. All right. We've, uh, keep problems with the call here, folks. 
We're trying to get appears you're calling back into a live show. We are reconnecting you now. Okay. I just want to give you and, and explain to you what's uh, what's happening. And back in 1963, we're to the congressional record. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. We keep losing blog talk. Since it appears you're calling back into a live show, we are reconnecting you now. All right. The list of communist goals are put up on the uh, website. U.S. acceptance of uh, coexistence is the only alternative to atomic war. U.S. willingness to capitulate in preference to engaging in, com uh, in atomic war developed the illusion that total disarmament by the United States would be a demonstration of moral strength. Permit free trade between all nations, regardless of communist affiliation and regardless of whether or not items could be used for war. Extension of long-term loans to Russia and Soviet satellites. Provide American aid to all nations, regardless of communist domination. 150 countries out there are getting your tax dollars, getting your money that's being loaned to you at interest to give to the world. Grant recognition of Red China to the UN. That's happened. Set up East and West Germany as separate states in spite of Khrushchev's promise to settle the German question by free elections under the supervision of the UN. Prolong the conferences to ban atomic tests because the United States has agreed to uh, suspend tests as long as negotiations. Allow all Soviet satellites individual representation in the UN. That's why they broke up the Soviet Union vote. So all of these individual satellites would be able to vote in favor of one world government. Promote the UN is the only hope for mankind. Uh, if its charter is rewritten, demand it be set up as a one world government with its own independent armed forces. And folks, that is happening right now. We've got reports after reports after reports of Russian and Chinese troops down in Mexico, down in Texas, over in Florida. And uh, you know, some communist leaders believe the world can be taken over as easily by the UN as by Moscow. Sometimes these two centers compete with each other, resist any attempt to outlaw the Communist Party. Rolling full blast right here. I think they call it uh, the Democrat Party. Do away with all loyalty oaths. Continue giving Russia access to the U.S. Patent Office. Capture one or both political parties in the United States. Ah, uh, well. This is, remember, this is written in 1958, along with Ayn Rand, and everything they asked for, they got. Use the uh, technical decisions of the courts to weaken basic American institutions by claiming their activity violates civil rights. ACLU comes to mind. Get control of the schools. Use them transmission belts for socialism and current communist propaganda. Soften the curriculum. Get control of the teachers association. Put the party line in textbooks. They call it globalization, not communism. Gain control of all student newspapers. The student rights uh, you, use student rights to foment public protest against programs or organizations which are under communist attack. Infiltrate the press. Get control of book review assignments, editorial writing, policy making positions. Gain control of key positions in radio, TV, and the movies. Continue discrediting American culture. This by degrading all forms of artistic expression. The uh, an American communist cell was told to eliminate all good sculptures from parks and buildings, substitute shapeless, awkward, and meaningless forms. Control art critics and directors of art museum. Eliminate all laws governing obscenity by calling them censorship. Break down cultural standards of morality by promoting pornography and uh, obscenity in books, magazines, motion pictures, radio, and TV. Present homosexuality, generosity, and promiscuity as normal, healthy, natural. Infiltrate the churches and replace revealed religion with social religion. Discredit the Bible and emphasize the need for intellectual maturity which does not need a religious crutch. Eliminate prayer in any form of religious expression in the schools.
<sighs> on the grounds that it violates the principle of separation of church and state. Discredit the American Constitution by calling it inadequate, old-fashioned, out of step with modern needs, a hindrance to cooperation, or just a goddamn piece of paper, as one of their tools, one of their presidents has said. Discredit the American Founding Fathers present them as selfish aristocrats who had no concern for the common man, belittle all forms of American culture and discourage the teaching of American history. On the ground it was only a minor part of the big picture. Support any socialist movement giving centralized control over any part of the culture, education, social agencies, welfare programs, mental health clinics. Eliminate all laws or procedures uh, which interfere with the operation of communist appara uh, apparatus. Eliminate the how House Committee on Un-American Activities, discredit and eventually dismantle the FBI, infiltrate and gain control of more unions, infiltrate and gain control of big business, and transfer some of the power of arrest from the police to social agency. And that's what's happening now. Treat all behavioral problems as psychiatric disorders, but no, which no one but psychiatrists can understand or treat. All this is happening right now. This is the story of Mark Taylor. This is what I've been telling you. And, of course, they put Edgar Steele away for the rest of his life for telling you the truth. Dominate the psychiatric professor and you, profession and use mental health laws as a means of gaining coercive control over those who oppose communist goals. This is what they tried to do with me, folks. They drugged me for three months, tried to drive me crazy, tried to, tried to basically tried to overdose me on, on drugs and tried to uh, put me in a mental institution. Now you've been listening to me for the last 20 years. You've seen any deterioration in my mental condition. And of course they discredit the, discredit the family as an institution and emphasize the need to raise children away from the negative influence of parents. Attribute prejudices, mental blocks, and retarding of children to suppress the influence of pa parents and don't say anything about these Oh, medical, uh, big farmer, farmer attacks on the Americans. Create the impression that violence and insurrection are legitimate aspects of the American tradition and the students of special interest groups should rise up and use united force to solve economic, political, or social problems. Isn't that what's happening with the Occupy movements right now? Overthrow all colonial governments before native populations are ready for self-government. Internationalize the Panama Canal. Done deal. Repeal the Connolly Reservation so the United States cannot prevent world court from seizing jurisdiction over domestic problems. Over nations and individuals alike. And all that's happening right now. McCain's done this. He's put a, a, a whole thing out here. That's the communist goals. All right. Now let me see if I can bring my uh, guest up. Yeah, we still got connection here. And uh, all right. Where are we at here? Just running a little slow here. Come on. You son of a gun here.
come on. Apologize for this, man. Computer is going so slow. <sighs> All right. My apologies again, folks. Trying to bring my guest up, and uh, it's uh, simply running so slow. I think I found it. Xavier Paul was supposed to be my guest today. And we're working on bringing him up. Sound or sound terrible there. Let's uh, hopefully that's going to work better. How are you doing, Xavier? Well, my session is in there. You need to. We need to cut that down a little bit here. You're 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 just over the the sound is overbearing here. Are you up on okay. Skype or are you on a on a cell phone? Okay, how how do you do? This should be much better now. Yes, sir. That's better. That's better. Okay, great. Okay. All right. A little bit better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Since it appears you're calling back into a live okay. show, we are reconnecting you now. We, I'm having problems with my Skype. It keeps uh, disconnecting and, and uh, reconnecting. But oh, I, okay. I think everything's up. Hold on a minute. There's a problem with this call. Hold on while we try to get the call back. Hold on. Since it appears you're calling now. Oh, you know what I could do is uh, put me back on my landline. Yeah, I think that would probably be better. This sounds uh, sounds terrible here. And I just swear that nothing. Uh, since it appears you're right. calling back into a live show, we are reconnecting you now. Okay. Okay. All right, it's sounding all right now. I can hear you now. Excellent. Well, actually, this might be better. Call me back Since on this. Since you're calling back into a live show, we are reconnecting you now. Oh, two oh one second. Call me back on your landline. All right, call me back. Yep. All right. Okay. All right. Since it appears you're calling back into a live show, we are reconnecting you now. All right. We're trying to get everything to work here, and it ain't working very well. I have just rebooted this machine before this show. Since it appears you're calling back into a live show, we are reconnecting you now. Okay. 
we've got that done. We've got that done. We're up on, uh, we're still up on Talk Show. We're still up on Crusade. Just Blog Talk Radio has been fading out or, or going out. And again, I don't know the problem here. Xavier, let's see who we got up here. Yeah, we're keep on trying here. Good morning, lady. All right. We're we're trying to get everything working here. And uh, hopefully Xavier Paul will call back in. We've got uh, he was scheduled to be my guest today. Uh, a, a Xavier does voiceovers. He works out in New York City. And I felt like having him on here was a good thing. But, uh, Recording started. Everything's working. Everything's working except Xavier Paul. And uh, he's been pretty, uh, come on, call me back in, Xavier. Jesus. You know what? I'm kind of tired of this. If he ain't gonna call back in and and uh, do this right, it's been very hard to get a hold of him. His sound hasn't been worth the shit. Supposedly to do voiceovers, but uh, I'm not calling him back. I'm not calling him back. I'm not bringing him back up. If he don't want to come, if he can't call back in and be on the show, I gave him 15 minutes. He blew that. Let's uh, let's go. Uh, let's go take a look. And some other things that are happening here. Now, uh, let's, uh, Kirk McKenzie is the son of a career Air Force colonel. He has degrees in electrical engineering, business administration, spent most of his career in high tech. He decided to stand up, make a difference, and remain silent no more. And I've got some of his work here. Let's see what what he has to say. Hello, my name is Kirk McKenzie. I'm concerned about the direction our country and our world are going in. And after more than 20 years and recent events, I am more concerned than ever. Accordingly, I have decided to be silent no more. And through a sequence of YouTube videos, I share the information I have learned. I hope you find these to be informative and helpful. Thank you. Today's topic is how to take our country back. We are beset by issues. And unfortunately, we bounce around from one to the one to the next with no resolution. In a similar fashion to the arcade game Whack-A-Mole. They never disappear. In fact, they only get worse. And we the people become frustrated by this endless activity. Another more constructive way to look at the issues is in a chronological order. The issues that have come and gone, and the issues that are currently being fought. In this fashion, we can see that a tower of power has been constructed, and it's been constructed in a sequence for a reason. The lower levels are the building blocks for the upper levels. Whether it's called progressivism, socialism, communism, globalism, or new world order, does not matter. They all want in the same thing. Our response as a people has been to fight the issues of the day. It is inherently a defensive fight. And by thrashing, we become worn out, and fatigued, and discouraged. You can't score on the defense. The second part of our response has been to concede those issues that have already come and gone. Instead, we need to go on the offense, and we need to make it count. Money is the foundation of this tower of power, 
1773, Hampshelmeyer of Ostrald lays down the proposition of rural control for central banking. Give me control of a nation's money, and I care not who makes the laws. His son, Nathan Rothschild, takes control of the Bank of England the day after the Battle of Waterloo. I care not what puppet is placed on the throne of England to rule the empire. The man that controls Britain's money supply controls the British Empire, and I control the money supply. And that's why I say to hell with the Brits. You know, you guys have been part of this New World Order. Now they're making us into the New World Order, but the empire on which the sun never sets is all a British Rothschild city of London plan. And it's planned right by, right there, written all up. Everything that uh, they're saying here is written up in the uh, protocols. You can see how this unfolds in the history of the United States. The first effort to You see how this unfolds in the history of the United States. The first effort to form a central bank is in 1782. It's given a 20-year charter. At that time, cor cor corporations were not perpetual. They were formed for only for a public good and only for a specific purpose. Hence the 20-year charter. And remember what Thomas Jefferson said, if you ever allow a private bank to issue your money, the banks and the corporations that spring up around them will leave your children homeless in the land that we conquered. The exactly. founder, Robert Morris, was imprisoned in 1798 for all the fraud and abuse, and the charter expired in 1802. The second effort was led by none other than the first Treasury Secretary of the United States, Alexander Hamilton. He gets Congress to agree to chartering the first bank in the United States for 20 years. In 1811, they go for renewal, and it's defeated by a single tiebreaker vote of George Clinton of New York. What follows is the War of 1812, a war with apparently no purpose, but in fact perhaps it's retaliation by the bankers to force the United States back into a situation where it doesn't have sufficient tax revenues, it needs money to fight this war, it needs to revert to central banking. If that was its purpose, it succeeded. In 1816, Congress charters what's now become known as the Second Bank of the United States for 20 years. In 1832, President Nicholas Biddle, president of the bank, seeks renewal and meets 